It says in the month of Nisan, the Jewish people were redeemed from Mitzrayim. And once again in the month of Nisan, we will be redeemed. Once again, the final redemption, the Siat Deshmai, it should come. The Karov, Amen. Bezrat Hashem. So I had a, a machshov, I had a thought that we'd do a little, uh, maybe some of the sugis of Mashiach, a few, uh, some treats, a little bit of uh, candy, the real good stuff. And Bezrat uh, Hashem, we usually do a lot of these things around, around the month of Av, during the time of the three weeks, but I feel like now we could use a little bit of extra chizik in these areas. So everybody has to know that uh, the Gemara in Sanhedrin is filled with this. The Gemara is in Perak Achelik, filled with Messianic predictions. So much here. We could literally we could spend a year on all these <laughs> ideas. <laughs> The Rosh Hashiva also at the end said it's coming. Uh, that's the way this speech. Yeah, Mamish. Okay, look at this. Oma Rebbe Abba, in Tzadi Ches, Ein Lecha Keitz Megula Mizeh. If you want a verse, if you want a source of tremendous revelation, of the signs of the coming of Mashiach, then look no farther than from here. Shanemar ve'atem hare Yisrael an pechem titenu upir yechem tisu ve'ami Yisrael ki kervu lovoi. That at the time that the land of Israel bears fruits once again in abundance, that will be a sign that the Messiah is mamish around the corner. And have we seen anything more wondrous than the last number of years? The land of Israel just burst forth with fruits, with produce. We export fruits. We turned the Negev, we made it blossom. Mark Twain famously said when he came here that this is the most desolate, horrible, God, <laughs> it's a barren wasteland, kites with dardar, filled with thorns and thistles. And all of a sudden, the Yidden come back to the land, which is one of the promises that the land will respond to the Jewish people returning back home to the land of Israel. And the land blooms once again, wondrous. It's a land that's deeply connected to the Jewish people. And it's the land that all we are asking for is this small land. Herzl wanted to take the Jews to Uganda, but we're not into that. We love Uganda, it's a great place, but Hashem's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful place. And, all, and it's the truth though, it's a great place. Every, but Hashem, it's, Hashem said that you have to come to the land of Israel. So this that Herzl said, that we, we should make a place, that because, you know, we have to, you know, everyone needs a place. Yeah, it's true. But this is a land that <coughs> Hashem gave to our forefather, Avram Avinu. It's not such a large piece of land. We're talking about something the size of New Jersey. That's it. And that this should be our home. And that Hashem promised us this land in the Torah. And it was given to Avram Avinu. And Avram Avinu walked this land and acquired this land and bought the land and King David bought Jerusalem and bought even after it was given to us we're also buying it that should, there, there should never be any doubt and from this place that we want to help all of humanity we want to give to all of humanity and the Torah itself says that this will be a land that will be connected deeply and intimately with the Jewish people in the land, which is a miraculous claim. You can't write a claim in the Torah that when the Jewish people are in the land of Israel, so it will bear fruits, but when they're not, it will go barren. I mean, you can't make that claim unless you're God. It's a great way to falsify your book because you need to have supernatural powers to do so. 
It's so important that the world, we're talking about real data, proofs that speak to the logical mind. How would you write inside of a book that the land will bear fruits when a certain culture of people, not that we're the best agricultural specialists, there's many, many people who know how to farm. But there's something that's intrinsic that when we come home to this land that it will bloom and blossom once again. And a sign of King David coming, the prophet says, is that once again the land produces a ton of food. We export foods around the world. It's unbelievable. One of the, a very powerful thing that happened, a big challenge, was there was a lot of people in a place called Gush Katif. And, and they were taken, and it was one of the most, the bread basket of Eretz Yisrael, <coughs> tremendous amount of <coughs> produce coming out of Gush Katif. And, uh, and uh, huge, the amount of, of crops that it was producing, food for families and for, and we exported. And after people were taken from their homes, so the, they saw that it was no longer producing uh, what it used to. So they wondered, you know, you know, why is that? So they said it's obvious because there was other people that they didn't know the farming techniques and they came in and they, they just couldn't produce the same amount. The only problem was the ones that were taking over were the same workers that were working there the entire time that the Jewish community was living there. And the second that the Jewish community left, the yield dropped uh, significantly. Because Hashem said that there is a land that I want to give to Klal Yisrael. And from this place that we could come here, and it's like a tree getting planted in the right soil that's appropriate. That's what the Ramban says, that the home of the Jewish people is in the land of Israel. If I have an avocado tree and I want to plant it in Antarctica, how well do you think it's going to work? It's not going to work so well. Mix that one. <coughs> Clipped. Okay. So what about uh, I, have, uh, I have some low bush, you know, wild blueberry strain. I'm from Canada, somewhere like northern Ontario. Geschmacke. Still, you know those wild blueberries over there? I used to have some good friends that were real hardcore blueberry pickers. And these guys were gewaldic. And uh, they, made, they made a lot. It's hard work, but wild blueberries, the, the little ones, not the GMO garbage ones that they have in the, the market, the mamish, the real ones. What's that? Organic. Okay, yes, this, this is beyond organic. This is like wild stuff filled Person with... Didn't even on them. Yeah, this is filled with vitamins, minerals, high-level stuff. So I want to grow that in, uh, you know, the tropics. I'm sorry, it's not the right climate. You need to have the right tree that goes with the right climate. And we're not upset. We've mentioned this idea before. We're not upset that the avocado <laughs> tree won't grow in Antarctica. And, and Antarctica is not racist, that it's not allowing the avocado tree to grow there. I know it sounds funny, but it's just, it, it's just it doesn't work. There's a climate that's needed for that tree. And so, too, the tropics are not the place for the... Uh, low bush, wild uh, blueberries of northern Ontario. So the Ramban says, so too, every single member of humanity is called a tree. We're a tree. And there's certain places that you could plant a tree, but it's a little bit outside the climate, and therefore the tree might grow, but it'll be strained. There's a level that it can't grow whatsoever. There's a level that it could grow bakoishi, it can grow with difficulty, and then there's the sweet spot, this is where it grows. So the Ramban said that the Jewish people were given the land of Eretz Yisrael. That's where we can grow spiritually. That's where we can flourish. This is where we plant ourselves. This is where we can truly grow. This is an important thing. And when we come back to the land, and the land bursts forth with fruits, will be a sign that Mashiach is coming. So look what's happening. Eretz Yisrael is bursting with fruits. We turned the desert and we, we made it bloom. Okay? Rabbi Allah Zer Oymar, Af zeh shenemar ki lifnei hayom mahem, 
שכר האדם לא יניה, ושכר הבהמה איננו, וליוצי ולבה אין שלוי מן הצער. There's something going to be happening, very interesting, that people, this is another prophecy, that people are not going to be marketable in the end of days. It says they're not going to want to hire people. Now, I'm not sure if you understand, but OpenAI has clipped so many jobs in a second. You've got absolutely <laughs> marketable people that have great skills. They're unbelievable, but they can't keep up with what AI can do. They're extremely talented, but they just they don't have the marketability. Meaning, they're giving the work, meaning, they can't even do the basic things. Everything is being converted over. I mean, they're not marketable. So, uh, one of my dear friends, who is an amazing company, uh, called Triple Whale, a very hush of a company. So he did something amazing with, with OpenAI, right? And they partnered up that right when it all started to unfold, so all the questions that they were ever asked by their clientele, they took all these questions and they, they put them into the open AI. They said, okay, how do you describe this? How do you describe uh, certain marketing strategies to a 10-year-old? They put in all the questions they were ever asked and within one second, every one of those questions were answered in, in, with brilliance. I mean, how do you explain some idea in the marketing to a 10-year-old? No problem, sure. So imagine you have a lemonade stand, and the person with the lemonade stand, and the unbelievable answers. So all of a sudden, you have all of these writers, and the, they, all the job can, and, and the content can just be generated. It's a very, very interesting thing. The people, they have talents, but they can't sell themselves. Yeah? Do you think that these like, open AI things will be able to prove Torah is real? So the difference between OpenAI and Torah is that the way I describe it is like this, that OpenAI is, is an unbelievable computer system that's only as powerful as the ones who's programming it, even though they have some element of intuition, if you will, but it's not soul intuition. It's not the neshama. Let me describe a, a situation of what the open AI, where this is all going. Because now they're doing it with, with voices, with human beings, with the, meaning not human beings, with beings. <coughs> they're programming them all. So let's, here's an example. They're creating a situation. This is, this is the example I use. They program an, an, an AI robot, but they give the AI robot all the facial features that it literally looks like a human being. And they program it with all the psychology of being the greatest therapist, with all 50 PhDs in therapy, psychotherapy, everything that you would need to know. They give it all of that, all that data. I mean, it has access to it all. And they even give it sensors to pick up on the, the chemicals that are being released by human beings and the feeling state that they're at. So all of a sudden, you have this robot walk down the steps. And the robot scans the person and says, you know, I sense that you're feeling a bit sad. So the person says, <coughs> no, I, you know, I am actually. And the, the robot says, it's computing. Like, what would I say? What does the textbook say to say at this time, exactly based on this? Say, so, you know, you want to tell me how you're feeling? And I say, you know, it's a bit hard. You can feel safe with me. We could talk about it. And it's literally it's saying, okay, fine. Should I get some tea? Do you want to you you know, lie down for this? Do you want to rest? What's the right? And you start speaking things out. Remember, it's a, it's a robot, and it's, it sounds exactly like a human being. All the voice things, it's all... And they even have the, the right type of pitch and f of the voice of what would be called a very soothing therapist's voice, the, everything. It's all in there. And at the end of this hour session, 
the robot has given every single thing over to the textbook, to the T, sounding like a human being. And how could it be better? How could, how, you know, it's going to put the therapist out of uh, business because he's better than them all. There's only one thing. Anybody who's married understands that there's times that, that husband and wife go and have uh, challenges in their conversation and because life is all about communication and conversation and making connection. So uh, a common situation goes like this. It's not always uh, that the woman mentions this, but oftentimes, but it can be the man as well. There'll be something along the lines of, you know, the woman will be speaking and she'll say to the husband, you're not listening to me. And he'll say back, but I could repeat every single word back you just said. I could say back, I could even say what, and she said, yeah, I know, but you're not listening to me. I don't feel that you're with me. Meaning, the AI robot could say every single thing back, but there's going to be this, this feeling at the end of the day, I don't know if you're with me. In the end of the day, you're a robot. There's not a soul in there. So the AI could take you all the way to the soul. It can't pierce the world of the godly soul. That place that, that's the deep, deep connection, that's beyond all the words and beyond all the textbook, I, I don't feel that you're with me. And I think anybody sensitive enough to this is going to realize that it's only going to take us so far. It's a gvald, a gatul. I think anybody who's able to harness this is going to be very successful. Anybody who knows how to harness, uh, I saw Elon, he mentioned something funny. He's like, I used to be into crypto, but now I'm into AI. <laughs> so, who knows what it'll be tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? This is a very powerful tool. If you could harness this tool, you have a tremendous koyach. And if you could harness it for the good, but it will never be the solution <laughs> the way they talk about it. It will never be the end of the story. Because there'll always be a feeling of it's not everything. I, I, I sense that something is lacking. I sense I need human contact. And in a world where things are getting lonelier and lonelier, you have more friends on these things than you could ever imagine and count ever in real life. But it feels lonelier and lonelier. The human being is going to run back towards the human contact. So it seems that right at the end of days, the prophet is saying there's going to be some element that the human being will have a hard time marketing himself. No one's going to want to rent out his services. I think a lot of the jobs are becoming obsolete fast in the world right now. There's a book called Deep Work. Yeah, you know about that? About really the people that will have uh, jobs are the ones that can really think deeply, problem solve in a deep way, which is really what we encourage people to do in yeshiva. And we invite friends of ours from all over the world to come join us in Eish Torah, to come and learn Gemara. Gemara is deep work, is deep, deep thinking, is to plunge and to go deep into your soul. The deepest of that is going into the secrets of Torah, going into Chassidus and Kabbalah. That's very deep. The AI can't take you there. It could, it could say it, but there'll be this feeling like, yeah, but you don't get it. I know you're saying all the right things, but I don't feel that you're with me. But a lot of the jobs nowadays are just becoming automated. So that's a sign, the Gemara is saying, that you're not going to be able to market your talents. You're not going to be able to sell and market your talents of right before Mashiach coming. And I think this is a very interesting connection to what's happening in the world right now. My dear friends, Mashiach is so, so close. <laughs> He's so close. And Pesach is the entire new beginning where we run back to Hashem and we become like children again, pure children, just connected to our Father in Heaven. So here we mention two signs. This is literally one line of the Gemara. There's pages. This is endless. And we could have gone, there's like a thousand other things to say just on these things. We mentioned two things to te today, that one of the things is when the land of Israel once again blooms again, and we're seeing that right now, we're in that messianic unfolding here in the Holy Land, and we want to bring blessing for the whole world, for all of humanity, that's what it means that we're back here, is to spread that light. 
Ki mitzian teitzatayr, that the light should burst forth from Zion. And that's our responsibility to do. That's how we, we have a big responsibility while we're here in the Holy Land. It's like if you went to the king's palace. So there's one thing to be a bit, uh, uh, you know, not really doing the king's will if you're somewhere out like in the boondocks of the kingdom. It doesn't, it's not so bad looking. But if you're in the king's palace and you're not respecting the will of the king, it doesn't look good. It's more severe. So here, us, here in the Holy Land, in Eretz Yisrael, we have a bigger responsibility to make sure that we're keeping Torah and Shabbos. Keeping Shabbos. And then we mentioned also, that the next thing is that there's going to be a time that it's going to be hard to sell one's talents. They're not going to be marketable. It's going to be a very interesting time. And that seems to be something that's happening right now. There's a lot of jobs are becoming obsolete. The next Gemara is actually going to talk about uh, runaway inflation, and, uh, which we'll talk about. I, I, I would, but we, uh, we're out of time for today. But, uh, and it's going to talk about restriction of the movement of products and goods getting from one place to the next, which is a very interesting concept that the Gemara is going to talk about. Because generally, when things are close to you, do they cost more or they cost less? less. Much less. There's less transportation costs. When they are far from you, then they cost more. So we're going to see an interesting element where the things are not <coughs> going to be moving so much and transportation is going to be limited and how that's going to affect prices on the global market. Everyone should have a wonderful day and we should be Zoich HaMamish to Amen. 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 Amen.